Hello and welcome to what I believe is episode 4 of this Let's Play series. I'm beginning to lose track. So, if you were not here for the previous three Let's Plays, I'm not sure, previous Let's Plays, let's just leave it at that, leave it vague. Uh, I have declared war on the Miyoshi. I'm trying to clean up this island here, this, uh... I'm not sure what the name of the actual name of this island offshoot from Japan is, but I'm trying to clean that up so that I have a safe base of operations where I can begin to launch my attacks into Japan. And I really want this province here because, as you can see, easy walk to Kyoto from there. Take this province and this province, and Kyoto is right there. Or I could just sail right here and just take this one province and go to Kyoto. But, uh, first I have to focus on getting rid of the Miyoshi, who will be, uh, a bit of a nuisance. They have a fairly strong army right here. So, I'm hoping I can deal with them pretty quickly and effectively. Right now, I'm also dealing with a Sogo Rebellion. So, I'm going to end the turn. And see if I can deal with these rebels fairly quickly so that I can turn my attention to the Miyoshi. And I believe I have an ally, if I'm not mistaken. Or I'm just very friendly with them and I'm trying to get an alliance. I forgot what clan it's called, it's this green clan up here. Alright, I'm not even going to bother with this, playing this battle, this will just be a waste of time, so... Auto resolve, and by the way guys, I'm actually going to lift my limit that I put on myself for keeping it around 20 minutes per video. I'm just going to go for however long I feel like going, so these videos can go up to maybe even an hour in length now. Because I feel like it's unnecessary to keep stopping and starting recordings even in the middle of a play session. So I'm just going to keep going to whenever I feel like going. Hopefully that doesn't make you guys angry in any way just doing it because I feel like that's a, an easier format for me and for you guys because I want to be constantly uploading things so I am going to blockade well not blockade uh, lay siege to this city and it's going to be a close battle if I attack and I'm not the greatest siege attacker so I actually will wait them out Oh, and I have the perfect army to deal with these people. They're all infantry, and I have a ton of katana samurai and archers. So I'm going to wait them out so that I can get them into a land battle. So what you want to do in Shogun 2 is pretty much fight battles on your own terms, and that's, I think, something that Sun Tzu said in the uh, Art of War, that only fight when you want to fight. Fight on your own terms. So I could, if I wanted to, uh, do a siege battle there, but there's no guarantee that I will win if I do a siege battle. So, I will be laying siege to them until they decide to come and attack me on the plains, which, uh, which will make it a lot easier to take the province. So, I'm looking around for why my income is so terrible. I'm guessing it's because this guy's blockading me. But I don't have any ships to stop the blockade. So maybe if I just get. If I secure a trade agreement with a couple more clans, maybe I, I could uh, I do not expect to pull myself out them. of this. But it seems like a lot of these clans are unfriendly towards me for whatever reason. Don't know why. Time and honor are both being wasted. I'll what give them my five-year-old son as a hostage. Oh, they like that deal. Okay, take my five-year-old son. Okay, so that is the only trade partner I could get. These are the ones I've been trying to get an alliance with. It is good For some to reason, they face. Come, do not want to ally with me, even though they are very friendly, which is fairly strange. Normally, it's pretty easy to get an alliance when it says very friendly, but not in this case. So, 
Okay, I got my income back to the green. We are positive once again. Hopefully I don't drop below this. Uh, that would prove to be very bad because I don't have a lot of money saved up since I went on this spending rampage to build up a quick army and support my aggressive playstyle. Which I don't normally do. Oh, thank you. They got those guys off my port. So now my income is back up to 896. That was very helpful from the Hatekayama. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Please do not rebel. Please, please, please do not rebel. I will exempt you from taxes now that I have some newfound riches. Let me see this. Okay, three more turns and I can upgrade my farms, which will alleviate my problem of having really bad food shortages across my provinces. So these guys are still holding out here. Not much I can do with the money I have, and plus, I would like to save up to get better farms. So, I will not be doing much of anything that turn. And, okay, here we go. I will fight this battle. And especially... Since their units are Ashigaru units, I should wrap them quickly. Just going back to what I was saying about how my army matches up with them perfectly. My my guys are pretty much based around hitting infantry units. And they're all infantry. And they're Ashigaru units, which means they're going to route pretty much instantly. So, this is pretty much the perfect makeup of an army that I could fight with my army. So, uh, should be fairly interesting. Uh, hopefully, I massacre these people like I got massacred in that last Avatar Conquest battle. Which, if you guys have not seen, I actually recommend watching because it was pretty hilarious what the the people did that uh that caused me to lose. All these load times in Shogun Two are just brutal. All right, here we go. Don't care about what you have to say. So I'm going to position all of my archers up front then I will position these guys in a shorter thicker formation oh that sounded very wrong but uh, a closer together formation because this way if they get charged from the front they can brace themselves against the lines in the back so your front line does not break that easily like if I spread them out like this well, probably more than that to cause their front lines to break. If I spread them out like like this, they do not have a lot of support for the front line. But if I keep them in boxes like this, they have they have better support. So if you get rushed by cavalry, which these guys don't have any of, but if you get rushed by infantry or anything, that will help them hold the front lines because they can brace themselves against the guys in the back. So that's just a little quick tip for you guys. Uh, where is my matchlock unit? Did not want my matchlock unit in the front. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep them in the front. Break some morale. But I'm going to put them at the end so I don't break my formation if I do decide to move them. Oh, they were just... Oh, I moved the wrong unit. Okay, so I'm going to put them at the end so I can maneuver them around without messing up my whole formation and leaving a gap in the lines. So I'm going to set all of these guys, actually I'm going to leave the matchlock guy out of it. I'm going to set all of these guys to skirmish mode. Which will make it so that if they get charged by any troops they'll fall back instead of standing and getting killed. But they are Chosokobi bow samurai so they're pretty good in melee combat. So the way it looks I'm not going to have to move anywhere. They're going to rush at me. So, time to send these guys up. And I'll send this guy at their general. And put all of these guys into defensive mode so that they will hold the front line. Oh, they do have... Oh, they have two generals. That's why they have so much cavalry. Oh, it looks like so much cavalry. Good, and the AI decides to charge. 
right at my Yari Samurai. Not a smart move for them. I'm going to turn off, I mean, I'm going to turn off skirmish mode. I almost turned off fire at will. So that these guys can hit there. I'm going to turn off skirmish mode there and put them on these guys. So their general is pretty much about to die. And I'm not sure if he's dead yet, because I actually have the volume pretty low so that you can't hear it over my mic. But you guys will be hearing the audio in the video, so I may sound like an idiot for thinking the general isn't dead. So, uh, sorry about that if that is the case. So our front line is holding pretty well. I'm going to turn off skirmish mode for all of these guys, actually, because there's no reason to have it on anymore. I need to stand and fight right now. Alright. We have some activity going on over here. One general looks like he's about to die. Okay, we have a mass chain route going right now. So Matchlock Ashigaru, take out these bow Ashigaru right now. Since with this chain route going, we could possibly get rid of these guys very quickly. This is the beauty of matchlock units. They will route people very quickly. Even though this unit's very diminished in size at this point, they've lost My Lord, a, a lot of troops. But they are still very effective and managed to route that unit. And there we go, the chain route went through all of them and that is the end of this army that was a very quick battle with very minimal losses by the way for those of you that don't know uh, when you chain route people that is the best way to get rid of an army and a chain route basically is when you route like two three or four units at the same time once you do that hit them as hard as you can like even if it's just like an accidental route and like you're just shooting them with bow units and you get like two or three of them rush them immediately because all the units will start to waver because they'll see their friends routing so if you hit them with a cavalry charge or something they're gonna break and run so whenever you see that the opportunity to chain route take it so that i pretty much instead of rushing my infantry in i had that matchlock unit there shooting into one of their few remaining units and that was enough to make the rest of their army uh the rest of their army retreat and not only was it my matchlock it was my chosokobi bow samurai as well so i had i was basically just using ranged units to uh to make them retreat and the chain route worked out pretty effectively and i lost Almost no troops aside from that matchlock unit. It got beat up pretty bad in combat because it's only an Ashigaru unit. One of our sea trade routes is and my ports blockaded again. Without intervention, they will continue to raid and take very back some income for themselves. So I'm going to raise taxes. It's difficult for me to raise taxes with these provinces being so angry all the time how much disorder is there one and how much order is here three so I will send a general hopefully that doesn't make these people okay that's good let's see what happens here and that's good too so we turn a profit all right they have one unit with six people left so I'm going to auto resolve this and we now are very close to taking over this entire island. I consider that little tiny sliver of land right here to be part of this island, even though it technically isn't. I Since you can move in between these two very easily, that arrow means that you can just walk across instead of taking a boat. So I consider that to be part of the island and is very vital to, uh, to secure and control over it. And that w seemed like the biggest army that these people are going to muster. So I am immediately 
I'm going to leave a couple troops just for purposes of keeping the people in check. I'm going to send my army right there. And once I take that, I'm probably just going to sit back and grow my economy. I am not doing a peace treaty with you. If you're offering me a peace treaty, that probably means that you are going to lose. Whenever people offer me peace treaties, it actually motivates me more to fight them because it makes me think that they are doing horribly and that if I don't, if I just keep attacking them, they're going to lose inevitably. So it actually encourages me to attack them, so I will move in. And two units, so I am not going to bother fighting this. And there we have it. I have secured this entire island. That was my main goal from the beginning. Don't want to get too much Imperial recognition or else we'll get a realm divide, but we're not close to that point yet. And I think the best point of entry into the mainland will be these three, four provinces around here. That way I have a nice buffer between me and this part of Japan. And I also have a good uh, launching point for attacks into Kyoto. So that's going to be my next goal. And also, uh, the clan I'm very friendly with is actually taking this island. So I... Wow, they're a big clan. Did not realize how big they were. They have 11 provinces and are probably the most powerful clan right now that I've seen. So securing an alliance with them Come. Let us is take tea and talk. pretty big for then me, after we have agreed, but what other pleasures I can't seem to get them to like me enough to get an alliance. I don't know why. It says they're very friendly. It's kind of misleading. What did that? Oh my god, my income's at 1,618. That is pretty nice. So, do I need to keep this? Yep, I'm going to need to keep that exempt. What about these guys? Okay, that's good. 1,651, that's a lot better than my negative 200 whatever it was before. So, uh, let me think, what was I going to do? Alright, more trade agreements. 185. Alright, so 185 is the highest. By the way, for those of you that don't know, if you mouse over this little icon of a ship, it'll show you how much predicted income you will get from trading with them. Uh, unfortunately, the top clan that I would like to trade with is hostile towards me. So my next in line are the Basho. Besho. Bes... I don't know how to say that. Besho. I will listen, but my heart tells and me that they accept the deal. So my income is now up to 1831. That is pretty good considering I have one province that has to stay exempt from uh, taxes because of its disorderly subjects. The food shortage is, oh my god, taking a toll on them. Minus 15 and it goes for like 20 in a row. Okay, that is not good. How much longer? One more turn, and I can start getting better farms. So if the people of Sanuki can bear with me for one more turn, well, then they have to wait however long it takes to build it, but hopefully they don't starve to death in the meantime. It looks like the Takeda are very big as well, and surrounding Kyoto if they don't already own it. I don't think they own it yet. I think I would have gotten a notification if somebody conquered it. Yeah, it doesn't say anyone owns it, it just says Kyoto. So the Takeda... Oh, these are two different shades of red. Okay, that confused me. The Besho are this shade of red. I I don't think I've ever seen them before. I don't, I don't remember them being in any of my other campaigns. Maybe they must have just gotten killed so quickly that I never got a chance to meet them. So, do not have enough money to build new farms. Oh, wait. This one was never upgraded? Why did I never upgrade it? Wow, I feel stupid. Okay, so I didn't even have to wait all those turns to upgrade that farm. I feel very stupid at this moment. And now, uh, two more turns, 
and I can upgrade my other farm. I'm going to I'm going to sit back and basically just let my farms upgrade. I'm I'm going to work on my economy and my farms and all of that, my infrastructure before I launch my main attack into the heart of Japan. I'm really wondering if I should get rid of this island here, but my the clan that I'm friendly with is very big, and I don't want to start any wars with them. Over time, the more they are left unchecked. Oh, that's a big army there. Quickly in these instances, Lord. Otherwise, the swinish rebels may uh, capture a province. I have several bow units and several melee units, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, about that rebellion, I could probably handle it pretty easily if they decide to lay siege to that town. I'm gonna see what places are suffering from food shortages. This place, definitely. So they will be the first to receive a terrace farm. Three more turns and I can get rid of this unrest in that province. I feel very, very stupid for not noticing that I could have upgraded it before without having to research that new technology. Okay. Not really in the mood to fight this battle at the moment. Sorry guys if you were looking forward to seeing that. I'm in micromanagement mode at this point. I just want to keep building up my infrastructure. How many people does this guy have left? Three units, that's nothing. I'll send these guys out and kill them, I guess. Normally in Total War games, I don't actually fight the battles. I really enjoy micromanaging all the cities. But, uh, online I really enjoy the battles. I don't know what it is in the campaign, though. I just really get caught up in, like, managing everything. But in this Let's Play, I will be definitely fighting a bunch of battles. I've, you guys have seen already, but that one I just was not in the mood to fight. I am just working on getting all of these provinces in order so that I can start turning the Chosakabi into a military and an economic powerhouse. Right now we are strong enough that we can contend with pretty much anyone, but not strong enough that we can dominate. I need to get to the point where once I move off this island and into Japan, I am dominating everyone. That's what I did in my Fall of the Samurai campaign, and it worked fairly well. I was pretty much, I was an Imperial clan, and on my own, because the other three clans that supported the Emperor each had one province, so they were pretty much non-existent because their ports were always blockaded, so they couldn't even do anything. So I was by myself and I took all of Japan on my own and then I proceeded to take out my three allies. So uh, I actually think I might have found a pretty good strategy to beating uh, Total War, to beating Shogun 2. I, I haven't tried it on regular Shogun 2, but on Fall of the Samurai it worked out pretty well. <clears throat> so... While we're waiting to get enough money for some farmland, I'll go into detail a bit. I started as a Satsuma on this island offshoot over here next to the Chosakabi Island. And I I quickly claimed the entire thing. I, I uh, took out as many people as I possibly could in a short amount of time. And then from there, I took a couple of the bordering regions over here in the mainland of Japan, but I didn't really launch a massive attack. I basically did it just to get a foothold there. And uh, from there, I basically just expanded my technology and my economy so much so that nobody in Japan could compare to me. So by the time I made my huge push into Japan, I had the most advanced units and the most money out of anyone, and I pretty much just blew through every single person up until the end and conquered all of Japan. I mean, there were times where I was, I was, uh, slowed down by other people, but 
There was never a time where I was just completely stopped dead in my tracks and I was just wondering how I could expand more. I was always constantly attacking the enemy and I think that's the best way that I've seen so far to win in Shogun 2 is just constantly keep your enemy on the defensive. That way they never have time to attack you. So we are working our way to getting better farms. I'm researching things to get land consolidation, which is the best type of farm, and I'm building some farms. So, we have farms building in... Uh, this one already is at land... is I mean at terrace farming, and will be a land consolidation when I upgrade it. This one is on its way to terrace farming. This one is terrace farming already, very nice. I'm still negative one though, which is unfortunate. I'm gonna have to keep upgrading. And once I fix my farm situation, I can also start working on my economy and infrastructure, such as like the roads and things like that. And the beautiful thing about farms is not only do they increase the food production, but they give you some money. So now, as I'm upgrading my farms, I am getting more money while at the same time feeding my people and making more room for soldiers and things like that, so it's pretty good to be upgrading your farms. So, we will continue onward with our journey to make the Chosakabi as wealthy as we possibly can. And a big part of that also will be upgrading the ports because I am an island, well J Japan is an island as well, but I am in a farther offshoot of Japan. So to trade with the mainland, I'm going to need a pretty good navy to take some of these over here, which will make me fairly rich. These uh, these trade routes to places such as Korea and China, they actually uh, are very valuable. For those of you that have never taken them before, I highly recommend you take these five pit places, build up a navy and take them all. Because uh, it gives you a very notice noticeable trading advantage over anyone else in Japan. And starting out on this island is very good for that, but unfortunately, this clan is just massacring everyone in their way, and they took the entire island within a couple turns. So that option is off limits for me now. And I do not have enough to upgrade my farms here yet. I only need to upgrade the farm in one more province. So... I will end this turn and upgrade that one remaining farm. Alright, mounting unrest. What is going on here? Uh, the food shortage is still. Well, I'm working on it. Sorry, people of Sanuki. I am working diligently to upgrade my farms. So land consolidation will be ready in 12 turns. So in the meantime, I will begin upgrading my economy and infrastructure. By the way, guys, I've been seeing this clan pop up here. It's not really stopping on their name, but you see that red dot with the white background? I'm wondering, is that clan the inspiration for the Japanese flag today? And if so, why? Did they win in history? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure the Takugawa were the, the shogunate, and I don't think that's the Takugawa sign. So I'm just wondering, why is that the sign for Japan on the flag? So any of you history buffs out there, if you don't mind, comment and enlighten, enlighten us all. I do enjoy history a lot as well, I'm just wondering what this little factoid would be. Alright, so let me see. I think that was the end of the farms that I need to upgrade. Yep, so I can now work on my economy and infrastructure. So roads will go to post roads. How many more places can I do that? Looks like everything's already at post roads aside from that one province. Uh, let me see what else I can do. 
Not much else at the moment. Trading ports will be greatly appreciated. I will probably end up making a Nanban trading port, even though it'll make this province a Christian province and mess up all my repression there because they'll have a non-clan religion. It does give access to cannons and cheaper, uh, cheaper matchlock units, I should say. I think cheaper matchlock units, but definitely better ones because it's imported matchlock units. And we also get some interesting trade ships with the European cannons outfit on them, which are perfect for taking these, like I said before, because you can just build a fleet of trade ships that are able to get the resources, but at the same time can defend themselves amazingly. So that is very valuable. So I'm going to end my turn and build that Nanban trade port. And then I'll build a fleet of trade ships and start sending them out to get me some more money. Alright, so we will go to Nanban trade port. Let's see what other types of things we can upgrade. We can upgrade the stables here, that's pretty good. I like having good cavalry in this place seems like, wow, this has really good cavalry. Having good katana cavalry is huge, I think. Because it gives you an option in melee combat and gives you that charge bonus. Wow, they have a 20 charge bonus, that's really good. And bow cavalry, I absolutely love for harassment. Sending these guys at a general and just putting them into skirmish mode so that the general never catches up with them is amazing. I love doing that. Gets you some cheap general kills. And for Fall of the Samurai, it works the same with things like Revolver Cavalry and Carbine Cavalry. So if you guys are playing Fall of the Samurai, I highly recommend you send your ranged cavalry, if you have any, at your enemy general and set them into skirmish mode and they will keep hitting him and every time he tries to chase them, they'll just run back and keep shooting at him. So you get a pretty good effect on the general because you'll most likely kill him without losing your unit first. And that will make it pretty easy to rat the other units. So now, back on topic, I'm going to be working on my other things here. What do I need to upgrade this to a dry dock? Alright, that's pretty far down for the research. So I'm going to finish with my research for land consolidation and then see what I'm going to do from there. For now, I'm going to look for things that will increase the wealth of my province. So I'm going to be building markets, and a lot of them. Wherever I can, there will be a market. Let me see what provinces I can build markets in. So right now, this one will be the next one getting a market. My income is starting to come along nicely. We're at 1727. That's pretty nice. Not sure what to do here. I really don't feel like executing him, but I also don't want to lose a thousand dollars. Alright, I'm not going to be the ruthless guy that executes him. Leaves me enough money to build the market, so I don't really care. And now I will focus on upgrading the. Uh, not sure what the technical name for it is. Fortress, Citadel, Castle. Those are all upgrades for it. I'm not sure what the actual name for it is. Fort. I'm going to be upgrading the fort. I feel stupid for not knowing that. Okay, so anything else dealing with the economy that I can upgrade? Nothing at the moment, so we will keep ending our turns. And as you can see, my farming went from negative two food supply to positive three, so we had a five point swing there which is very good. That helps us out a lot with the unrest in our in our provinces. So now I will focus on upgrading these forts. And I think pretty much all of them can be upgraded. This one can. That's going to cost a lot, 5,000. Yep. All of them do not need any more technology. 
so it'll just be a matter of saving up and upgrading those. Why are they plotting to invade us? Alright, I'm gonna have to request an alliance with them. At least if they break the alliance. Oh, they're indifferent towards us. Why? Threats of attack. I never threatened them. Oh, that's a problem. Welcome. I'm here to listen. I will pay them as much money as they want. Everything in my treasury. And what about... Can I do multiple, pay repeatedly a thousand for ten turns? Okay, they seem to like that one more. What about, how does fifteen turns do it for you? What about... Twenty turns? Oh, uh, that's not working out. As politeness dictates. How much money do I even make per turn? 1800. I'll offer them 1500 per turn. Pretty much all of my income, but anything to stop them from attacking me. Because they will most likely destroy me if I let them attack me. Uh, this is very difficult because it doesn't seem like they're going to accept my payments. Alright, for 20 turns they'll accept it. What about 15 turns? Unaccept. Oh, that was a single payment, that's why. Fifteen turns, let's see. They'd accept it for fifteen turns. I don't want to do that much. Will they accept it for ten? Keep doing single payment. Alright, 10 turns. Uh, gonna have to go with... What about 12? Okay, I'm good with that. 1500 for 12 turns. Get military alliance. Nope, that's not gonna work, so I'm not gonna ask for... Now that they're friendly with me, Be I welcome, my will friend. ask them for military access. I'm going to only give them 20 and I'm going to try and get and them. Okay, they don't hearts. like that. Alright, they don't like military access, apparently. So I was finally able to secure an alliance with them, so... Now I do not have to worry about them attacking me, which is good. Only problem is, my income is now down to 391 per turn. And it's now down to negative 197 per turn. That is a problem. Hopefully, oh there we go, now back to 406, okay that's good. I can live with 406. It's a pretty decent number. So I'm going to upgrade this market to a rice exchange. Now that I have my Nanvan trading port, I can trade with more people. And the most is the Takeda, so let's request a trade agreement with them. Wow. I'll and they're okay with it. So, I'm up to 610 again. It's really bad compared to before, but not horrible. I can deal with it. If it's if the difference between me getting attacked by the biggest clan that I've seen so far and not getting attacked and living in peace is fifteen hundred dollars for twelve turns, I will gladly pay that. I am not about to get attacked by the biggest clan. The old gods have had their time. Truth has come with the foreigners. 
and souls can be saved by following the church's teachings. Heathens who cling to the old ways will be compelled by the power of Christ to kneel before God. So there we have a little Christianity movie. Because we now have a Nanban trading port. And for those of you that don't know, the Nanban is the name given by the Japanese to Europeans. So we have a European trading port. Most of the European influence in Japan at the time was the Dutch. So... The Dutch are probably the ones trading in these Nanban ports. I'm not even sure if Nanban is the name for European. It might even be the name for Dutch, because Dutch traders were the primary influence in Japan at the time. Just a little history fact there. Um, let's keep working on uh, getting getting some more money. Right now we are struggling. We're turning a profit, but we're we're struggling a bit. This is a very long turn. All right, there we go. Oh, why is trade with them no longer possible? That's a problem. That's a very big problem. Gonna have to try with the date. What a time! All right, and they take it. There we go. So income didn't fall that much from losing the Hatakayama, but right now I need any income I can get. So those two rice exchanges that are building will hopefully save me from this horrible state of trying to upgrade my buildings but not having enough money to do so. I was really hoping I wouldn't have had to give that much money to get an alliance with those people, but it seemed like they were very greedy. Alright, looks like we're nearing 45 minutes almost. Like I said, I'm not going to put a cap on the videos anymore, but... 45 minutes is getting a bit long just for the fact that I have to upload and render it, which will take forever on my terrible internet connection. I really, really wish I had Fios Quantum. You have, you have no idea how much easier that would make uploading. I mean, I did the math and it was something like a 3 hour video, well not a 3 hour video, an upload that would normally take me 3 hours with Fios Quantum if their theoretical advertised speeds were the ones I actually got would take me about two and a half seconds. So, you can imagine how much of a difference that would make for me. So I'm going to keep uh, ending my turn and waiting for me to get enough money to do absolutely anything. I think once these two rice exchanges are done building, I'm going to end this let's play. Just so that I keep it under an hour so I'm not uploading ridiculously huge files that take me forever. These turns are taking forever. We need some clans to get out of here. Why am I losing so much trade? Nice. Reduces administration cost. So that, Yurakami. What clan is the Yurakami? My ally. My guess is there was a realm divide now. Because of how big these guys are getting, they're already 15. They're indifferent towards me already. Alliance broken. Wow. I'm guessing once there's a realm divide, the alliance gets automatically broken because I would not have wanted to break that alliance. But, if I have to, these are two cities near and dear to my heart. I take them every campaign. I don't know why. For some reason, I just love taking these cities. They give me a really good position. So, 
I will probably be taking those fairly soon. Alright, market is building there, and rice exchange here, one more turn. Rice exchange here is done. Oh wow, and I can upgrade that to merchant guild once I actually get enough money. So, I'm going to rebuild my army after I just took out the Miyoshi. And I'm going to send them and attack those guys who were formerly my allies. I keep forgetting their name. But that should give me a good foothold in the south of Japan. If I can take most, if not all, of their territory, that would be really good. Because that would give me control over both offshoot islands of Japan and the entire, I don't know what you want to call it, southwest, whatever. Alright guys, so that is... Sorry about that guys, a bit of an interruption there. But that is going to be the end of this video. Uh, I think the rice exchanges are done building. I'll just quickly upgrade this one to rice exchange. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and be on the lookout for more Let's Plays because we are going to take over Japan together and become the new Shogun. So, see you guys in the next video.